Hello friends, what is going on? It is your good buddy Sam and it's time for another one of these exciting Max MSP tutorials. So, if you've been following this channel recently, uh, you know that I've been trying to organize a Max for Live workshop over at Harvest Works. And, you know, a couple weeks ago, the day came, I took all my notes, I picked up my laptop, I went over, I was ready to give this just amazing, juicy um, workshop laden with, with knowledge. And then things didn't quite work out as I had hoped. But it's okay, you know, I mean, I'm not upset. These things happen. People have busy lives and to devote a whole day to learning Max for Live, it's hard, I understand. Um, but having said that, you know, I've got literally pages and pages of notes here and a lot of stuff that I just now really need to talk about. So I'm gonna take the material from this uh, workshop that I was going to present there and instead just do a few different videos um, you know, kind of outlining an arc of how you can get really, really good at making Max for Live devices. So this consider then to be part one of this nascent series. So first thing, live. What is live really? Um, it's basically a musical sausage machine. It takes MIDI and it takes audio and it spits out, you know, your amazing set. Um, there are Max for Live devices that let you build, I mean, everything in live, uh, whether it's an instrument or an audio effect or a MIDI effect, it does one of those three things. It takes MIDI and makes MIDI, it takes MIDI and makes sound, or it takes sound and makes sound. And Max for Live devices let you build Ableton Live devices basically out of Max patches, which is cool. So there's three kinds, obviously, audio effects, instruments, and MIDI effects. Let's start by making a really simple instrument just by coming over here, clicking Max for Live, opening up this Max Instrument tab and dragging Max Instrument down here into the, whatever this thing is called. Um, I also like to turn on computer MIDI keyboard so that you can push keys. You can see over here, this little MIDI thing is freaking out. Uh, and that means that MIDI is going into this Max Instrument. So click on this little Pac-Man thing, Max 6 will, or Max 7 or whatever Max you have will open up. And then Max 2.0. 7.2.3 is available, that's cool, but we'll deal with that later. Um, so here you go, here's the canvas of your Max instrument, and hopefully this is a familiar situation to you. Here's where MIDI comes in, here's where audio comes out. You put all the magic in the middle that makes this happen. Um, so let's just start by deleting this comment, deleting this comment, We've, we know what we're doing here, we don't need these little helper comments, we're veterans. Um, so let's build the simplest possible instrument first. Simplest possible instrument, you've got to have two things, a generator, like for example, a saw tooth wave and an envelope, ADSR. Let's just give this some simple defaults, 5.5, five, 0 0.8, and like 400. Simple attack, decay, sustain, release. Um, so these two things, it's the guts of the instrument. Uh, the MIDI that comes in here, it can be all kinds of MIDI data, notes, control change, program change, um, whatever. So it's good to use an object like MIDI parse, or when I say it's good to, I mean you have to use MIDI parse um, to parse that data. You can also use note in uh, just to get the note, uh, the, the MIDI notes directly if you're not interested in the other MIDI data, but we'll see in a, in a later video why it's good to use MIDI parse. Um, so MIDI parse, this outlet is your note on and note offs. So let's take what's coming out of here, these note on, note off pairs, and make a trigger with the two arguments L and L. So first, let's deal with the envelope. Um, basically, we want to take just the velocity and map that to, or send that to the envelope to generate the envelope curve. Um, the number that comes in is gonna be between zero and 127, or actually, sorry, velocity is the second. Um, this is equivalent to taking an unpack and then just taking the second element of the list. So this just gives us the velocity from the pitch velocity pair. Um, we could feed that straight into ADSR, but that's gonna be a number between zero and 127, and uh, audio amplitude goes between zero and one. So we should just uh, scale this, zero, 127, to be in the range of zero to one. And as always in Max, those decimals are important. Um, this could go straight into ADSR. It's slightly more perceptually correct to multiply this by itself to square it before sending it into ADSR. Um, 
at least I think it is. Don't, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure this is the correct thing to do. Um, over here on this side, we don't want to change the pitch for note offs. Um, as you know, MIDI notes come in pairs, note on, note off pairs. Um, so we can use an object called strip note to deal with just the note ons. And then we'll make a MIDI to frequency object here to convert the MIDI note value to a frequency value. Multiply the <laughs> multiply the envelope by the oscillator to generate to apply the envelope to the oscillator and then just send that out both channels. Now I'm going to save this as simple synth. And if you jump back into live and start pushing keys, whoa, sorry if that was super loud. There you go, simplest synthesizer of all time. Um, one issue that you'll notice right away is that if you play a note and then play another note and then release the old note, it deactivates the note that you're holding down. Play note one, play note two, release note one, note two goes away. That's because our patch doesn't deal with voice stealing at all. Um, so the first and simplest addition we can make to this patch is to make it, there's Basically, the issue we're dealing with here is how to deal with multiple notes played at the same time. The simplest way is just to make our synth monophonic. We'll talk about a polyphonic synth in a video to come. For now, um, you can just use a poly object, give it the arguments one and one, and what that implements is a monophonic voice allocator uh, that implements voice stealing. So when you play a new note, it forgets about the old note, and that's important because it means that it will ignore the note off value for the uh, note that you don't care about anymore. So all you gotta do is slap this thing between um, the output of MIDI parse here and what comes out of this or goes into this trigger. Uh, well, almost, you actually have to pack the pitch and velocity together again before you send those off. But that's it, done. Hey presto, that should be our, let's move this over a bit. Hey presto, that should be our very simple uh, synth again, now with good voice dealing. So let's try it in live. Works perfectly. Releasing the old note doesn't affect the current note. Um, so uh, the last thing we might want to try here, and, and something that people do with um, monophonic synths a lot, is implement something where when you play a note, um, it lets the previous note slur into the new note. Uh, that's something that there's a lot of wrong ways to do in Max. Um, I'm not sure what the best way is. One way that I found that works pretty well is to use poly with an object called borax. Um, borax, if you give it a note on, note off pair like this, um, what it does that's really handy is not only does it report the pitch and velocity of the note that uh, is played, but <clears throat> it also will, out of this outlet, send the number of notes that are currently active. So if that's anything greater than one, you can apply a little slur to the note as it comes in. So here's how let's do that. Let's take these three things here, the number of notes currently active, the pitch and the velocity, and pack them together into a list. Next, you can hear my computer fans going really hard. I have absolutely no idea why. Lord only knows why uh, moving max objects around inside a patch is a computationally intensive task. Um, what are we talking about? So anyway, uh, pack comes through here, make a trigger list list. The first thing that we want to do is look at the current number of voices playing together. So let's make a dollar one. This will extract the current number of voices because now the list is number of notes active, pitch velocity. So dollar one is just the number of voices active. And what we could do is see if that's greater than one multiply it by our slur time, which will make 250 for now. And then let's pack this into a list integer float that we'll revisit later when we affect the pitch, when we change the pitch of the, the note that we're playing. Now, this list here can go straight into poly just like last time. 
The only modification that we want to make is down here before values go into saw. Let's add a line tilde so that we can slur from one note into the next. Um, one thing you might know is that M2F, MIDI to frequency, has both a, a control rate and a, a audio rate um, equivalent, or rather it has an audio rate equivalent called M2F tilde. So if we take what comes out of strip note, pass it through a line tilde, and send that into MIDI to frequency tilde, this is the first step of letting us actually slur one note into the next. Um, the only other thing to do here, as you know, line takes uh, messages that you send to line that are um, two numbers. The first number is what value to go to. And the second number is how long to take to get there. So all we need to do is take the output of strip note, connect it to this pack, connect the pack back to this line. And just like that, we've got a synthesizer, a monophonic synthesizer that also implements uh, slurring for new notes. Let's just clean things up a tiny little bit here. I don't know that you can make this patch much cleaner than this. It's not exactly perfect, but it's pretty good. Uh, save this and then try playing a note. Oh, is that right? I don't think so. Uh, let's see, borax, this thing. Oh, okay, so what's wrong with this is I forgot this. what's coming out of this here. Um, it's three values, the voice count, pitch, and velocity. We only need pitch and velocity, so let's make a $2, $3 to slice out just the pitch and velocity. And hopefully when I save this, uh, probably to push stop here. Mm, may have to delete something. The saw probably. No, delete the ADSR. Yes, there we go. Okay, let's try again. Got that slur going, very exciting. So last little thing you could change, this ADSR here. If you wanted, you could go at legato one so that when you play a new note and there's a slur, it slides into it without creating a new attack. That's, uh, that's it, that's the very basic simple synthesizer. Um, if you wanted to, you could add controls for the ADSR and controls for the slur time. In fact, let's do that really quickly. Let's just make a live dot dial. and uh, open up the inspector, come over here and change the long name to slur time and the short name to slur time. More on the difference between long name and short name later. Make sure the unit style is time and we'll make the range zero to a full second say. And let's connect that right here. And then let's make a comment, simple synth, or simpy synth, I guess. Grab this simple synth, grab this slur time, um, command shift P to add those to presentation, and then option command E to switch to presentation mode. Last important thing, um, open up the inspector by pushing command shift I and then find under view where it says open and presentation. Give that a check, save this, or actually make the window as wide as you want to be, and then save it. And then here it is, our simple synth. So now if we go. So that's the slower time of zero. Let's up the slower time to a full second. Very exciting. Um, so that, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, is the simplest possible synth, I think, that you can make in live. A um, little bit of monophonic, or a little bit of uh, slurring and, and uh, monophonic voice stealing implemented there. Um, so next time we'll talk about polyphonic synthesizers and how to use poly tilde. It seems really, really hard, and it is the first couple times, and then you play with it, and it's actually really straightforward. Um, so thanks for watching. I look forward to more parts of this Max for Live. Um, bitterness tutorial series. Uh, see you next time.